video that rips apart the technique of legendary guitar players like Guthrie Govan, Jason Richardson or Michelangelo Badio, a young kid that is probably one of the best guitar players out there, has created one of the most controversial videos of guitar education. This video opened my eyes and it changed my point of view on playing guitar and it definitely changed my technique. So there are a lot of things where I agree with this video but also a lot of things where I hardly disagree. So let's check out the Universal Technique video by Anton Operin. Here we go! Hey Guitar Champion, what's going on? I'm Justin Hombach, back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video. But first, who is Anton Operim? Well, Anton Operim is a Russian guitar prodigy, a wonder kid, born in 1995. And let's say this, as a guitar player, he is definitely next level. When people are saying to me I'm good at picking, no, this guy is good at picking. He could easily play really difficult songs by Paul Gilbert with the age of 11. So his education is one that happens from the beginning and it seems to be a really good education. And the video that I'm going to talk about in today's video, he released it one year ago. At the same day where I released my ultimate guide for speed picking video. And after seeing his video, I would love to go back to my ultimate gate of speed picking video and change a few things here and there. <laughs> I knew it like it was yesterday because I was on a long train ride while watching this video. And this video is, to be honest, not so easy to digest. It's a two hour long video with only him talking and a little bit of playing about guitar technique, especially about picking. Well, mostly about picking. But it's also a really good video to yeah, work on your improvisation in C minor because over this two hour long video there's one backing track in the background, one, and it's the same four chord progression for two hours long. C minor seven, I believe it was, something like D7, G7, something like this. Really cool gypsy jazz thing, but yeah, two hours long. So in this video definitely had an impact on me and my playing after seeing it in a good and positive way. First in a negative, because after seeing this video I was yeah, depressed and lying in my bed like two weeks and questioning my work as a guitar teacher a lot. And this is why I made this video one year after I released it, because I had to watch it a lot of times, really to analyze what he's saying so I can have an opinion about this video. And it's really important for me to share this video to you guys, to my community, because it only has 50,000 views, uh, while my ultimate guide for speed picking has 160,000 views. And I would love that his videos would have 160,000 views as well, because there's so much to learn inside of this video. But also, I have a little bit of critique about this video. So, so Anton, if you see this video, feel free to let's get in touch. Let's have a discussion about this, what I'm going to say here, because we need this more in guitar education. Currently, guitar education is way too much. One guy is saying this, the other guy is saying this, this guy is saying this, and we don't have a real discussion between those guitar educators. We need this kind of communication. So I'm always open for guitar educators to contact me and to be in touch with me and I would love to be in touch with them because the bigger picture in the end is not that I get more clicks on my YouTube video than this guy and I sell more master classes than this guy. The bigger picture in the end is that we all can grow as musicians and as guitar players. So now back to the video. The video is so now but back to the video. I would say you can divide this video into two different parts. And the first part is something where I agree 100% to everything what Anton is saying here. He's talking more about the philosophy of technique and why technique is important to be able to play certain things. And he's also complaining about the stuff that I also complain a lot on this channel, like the stupid guitar teachers who are saying things like, uh, do the stuff like, like it's comfortable for you and don't change anything when it's comfortable, blah, blah, blah. And he compares guitar technique with the science and sport, which I also like to do. We both have a scientific background or are really fascinated of the world of science. So as I mentioned with the first part, 
I 100% agree what he's saying there. Now in the second part, he's analyzing certain guitar players in certain categories. And these are, and now I have to take a look at my little notes here, muting, stamina, dynamic, speed, string switches, the dependency of, yeah, if you are dependent on playing only an even number of notes per string or an uneven number of notes per string, and the synchronization. The guitar players that he's analyzing in this video are Guthrie Goffin, Jason Richardson, Martin Miller, Michelangelo Badio, Marty Friedman, Ingvi, Paul Gilbert, Rick Graham and himself. And there again a lot of stuff where I agree with what he's saying and a lot of stuff where I disagree. Let's take a look at this. But before we begin with the fun, a word from you because you are the sponsor of this video. If you want to support my channel then you have yeah, I would say two options. The first option is subscribe to this channel and leave a comment, leave a like, share these videos that you like with your friends so that the almighty algorithm is going to please me and to share those videos as well a little bit more. And the second thing is check out my master classes, especially my big master class, the Zen of Speed Picking. Link is in the description box. With your help and your support, it's able for me to make this. It's a full-time musician, full-time living musician and to research more about practicing shredding and guitar and creating those videos. So big thanks to you, the sponsor of these and all the other videos. First he's analyzing Guthrie Govan and I would say this is the most important section of the video because here he's talking a lot about muscles, about the muscles in your forearm and how important they are for the picking technique and for these certain categories like muting, stamina, synchronization, all this kind of stuff. It was the reason why I have watched these two hours in the last couple of days again because I actually have planned to make a video about the latest Troy Grady video which really disappointed me from what he was saying there. And I was researching to have some facts against the stuff that Troy is saying there. And therefore I rewatched this video, especially the muscle part. But then I thought, man, this video has only 15,000 views. So I had to make a video about this because maybe then this video gets more views. And it, I, I truly believe that this video can help you to get a different perspective on playing guitar and on your technique, even though it Mm, is again dangerous to watch. So what he's basically saying is that it's important, if I'm now rephrasing it correctly, I'm sorry if I'm wrong here, um, is that it's important that we only use one joint in our arm and not multiple joints because when we're using multiple joints the way how our brain is transponding or transporting the information to move the certain joint it's, it's, it gets distracted I would say. He also said it's so important that we have a relaxed kind of arm position a neutral kind of arm position because when we start picking and we have already in the neutral position lifting our uh, wrist like this or putting it putting it down like this then we already have some muscle involved that could hinder us in stamina and in synchronization so it's really important to have really neutral kind of position where you are relaxed in your muscle and you can clearly see how my muscle this muscle group here which is really important for picking technique is changing when for example I let my wrist lay down you see it moving there here you can see it a little bit better right here for example and you can see it as well when I'm lifting it here when we start picking with this kind of position not yet doing the picking motion but when we already have this kind of position before the picking motion we already have a tension in our muscles that is unnecessary and he is explaining this as well really really good in his video but now comes my first critique about synchronization because when he speaks about synchronization especially about Guthrie Govan I mean there was a lot of things inside of this was really which really helped me getting a new perspective on synchronization. Because before that video, I was thinking like, man, when it sounds like Guthrie Govan, it seems to be okay, because Guthrie Govan is such a great player. And after seeing this video, I was like, no, when it sounds like Guthrie Govan, something is wrong in your synchronization. And my hand synchronization has changed a lot since I've seen this video and helped me a lot to get new perspective and to get new methods on how to work on your hand synchronization and as well to realize that there is not an exercise which can help you with your hand synchronization. The problem is something else. It's often how we are practicing and not what we are practicing. So, but he is focusing 
when it comes to synchronization as well on all the other guitar players he's focusing in my opinion too much on the right hand because there's also another factor which can lead to desynchronization it's not only that you will lose stamina on your right hand you maybe start to play slower with your right hand for example in my playing it's not the right hand necessarily that is the problem for my desynchronization it's a lot of times the left hand especially when playing descending scale runs like a pull-off motion there my left hand always starts to slow down way faster than my right hand so here i would say it's not 100 percent always the right hand which is the troublemaker for your hand synchronization it's also the left hand and we always have to take a deeper look in our left hand as well how should we do this practice every hand individually when you have a certain lick practice for example the lick only with the right hand muting the left hand or then only with the left hand and always record film yourself and analyze yourself but i've talked a lot about this here on this channel now the next thing that you have to keep in your mind while watching this analysis of these guitar players is what kind of education and focus on certain specific fields of guitar playing does these guitar players had in their past in the end of the Guthrie Govan video, he is saying like Am I more talented? No. There, I totally agree. Talent is often a little bit overrated when it comes to guitar progress. And then he said, do I practice this stuff more than Guthrie did? And there, to be honest, I would say yes. Because from what I've seen from Anton's videos, and there are not too many outside of YouTube, but, but really cool ones where he's already playing with uh, as an 11 year old, really crazy shit. Because playing this kind of stuff as a 14 year old, I think that Anton has practiced his right hand technique with a lot more focus, a lot more dedication than Guthrie, to be honest. Because from what I know from Guthrie, Guthrie's focus was not necessarily with a big awareness of certain techniques and with the kind of way how we practice nowadays, with recording yourself all the time and all this kind of stuff. I would assume that the way how Guthrie practiced in his early days, in his beginning days, was a little bit more based on improvisation, on soloing, on all this kind of stuff. And so I would say there is a difference in education and in focus when you're comparing Anton Operim with Guthrie Govan. And then again, after seeing this video, I was questioning myself as a guitar teacher a lot. And I asked myself, well, man, I cannot play like him, so should I be able to talk about certain techniques because there are other people who are better at this technique? And then a really good friend of mine and really, really great guitar player said to me like, hey, he is probably doing this kind of stuff since he's an eight year old kid with a lot of focus and with a lot of with a lot of great education behind it with uh, it seems to be that his father used to be his guitar teacher so he always was confronted with this kind of focus well on the other end i have this focus and this awareness about my technique since only a few years to be honest and this realization helped me a lot to get back out of bed and say okay it's a good thing that i'm going to teach certain techniques and certain shredding kind of styles here on my channel and i'm worth doing it. The second thing that I kind of disagree with is the comparison with slow technique to fast technique. That you should play the same way you play fast as well as slow. Mm, there I a little bit disagree. I don't have scientific facts behind it, only I have my own experience, but well, what I've seen the last couple of years is you not necessarily need the same technique slow as when you're playing it fast because you have more time to cheat your way around certain things. For example, pick slanting. I always recommend practice pick slanting fast. It is not helpful for your pick slant to practice it slow because you don't need it slow. You have often enough time to make a bigger movement cross around the string to plug the next string that you want to change and you're able to plug. So you don't have to do pick slant when you are playing something slow, but you, I guarantee you have to do pick slanting when you're playing something fast. 
so on. And the fast kind of way, it's really important to have again a focus on it. And yes, you can create an awareness about a certain technique even when you're practicing something fast. It is possible. And there, I always like to compare again with sport. It is absolutely normal for our body to do certain movements different when we're doing them slower compared to faster. And like Troy Grady showed us in the guitar scene with the chunking kind of method that our brain works differently as well when we are doing something fast compared when we're doing something slow. And the last thing that I and the last thing that I criticize about this video is that the video clips that he's using to analyze the certain categories of picking, like for example the clips for Marty Miller or Jason Richardson or for Michelangelo Badio, these are taken out of context a little bit. The best example here is I would say the Jason Richardson example. The video that he showed is where he's trying to play a picking lick and that picking lick is not clean at all. <laughs> But the circumstances, I would say, is really important to take a look at as well. It is at Young Guitar. And there once was an interview from Kiko Lorero where he was talking about yeah, making videos at Young Guitar. That it's not easy being in Japan, going to the Young Guitar studio, getting an amp that is maybe not the amp that you would like, being in situations which are, which are just uncomfortable, having just a few people in front of you watching at your guitar, having a camera in front of you. For me, my playing always changes when there's a camera in front of me. It's really terrifying. And then you don't know, jet lag, being tired, all this kind of stuff can have a lot of influences on how controlled your playing is. If you're just in here from the editing room, I'm really sorry it is guitar world, not young guitars, but I think the circumstances around the situations is quite the same or can be quite the same. Maybe not the jet lag, but hey, you never know. And still if, I mean, just re-watching this clip and this little leg, uh, it's still pretty, pretty impressive what Jason is doing here. So I don't think I could do it better. He's totally right when he's saying that our technique should not be based on luck, it should be based on control. Absolutely. And for me, it is also my goal to get my technique up to a certain point where I can play certain stuff in every situation. And there are some licks, some stuff out there where I would say, okay, I could play this kind of stuff when I was waking up, being sick, or somebody's holding a gun at my head. I definitely would say there are certain licks out there that I can play, but definitely not everything and definitely not in this kind of level like Jason Richards. Because getting to that point that everything is not based on luck but on control and being able to play all these kind of licks in every situation, this needs a lot of time and a lot of practice. And maybe some guitar players, and I know some personally, got to a certain point where they said, okay, I don't care anymore about this technique. I focus rather in writing songs, making music, improvisation, having a good sound or whatnot. And I think it's absolutely okay when a guitar player is choosing at a certain point in career to stop worrying about technique and how clean and tight and precise the technique is. I'm not at that point. I love working on my technique. It's one of my biggest passion. I really love it. Getting better and more controlled and having more awareness about what I'm doing here. But it's also a struggle every day because every day you have to face yourself and you're playing and you always get reminded like this works, this does not work. Here I have to practice this a little bit more. It never ends. And I totally can get when some people don't want to face this frustration anymore. Absolutely fine. And I totally get when certain guitar players are saying they don't want to spend four, five, six hours of practicing anymore because they have done this in the last 10 or 15 years. And maybe they want to focus now a little bit more on other stuff which gives them which gives them a better quality in life because there's more out there than playing guitar. And this leads to the last question of this video is, does a teacher, a guitar teacher, have to play on these kind of levels? Is only then he allowed to teach a certain technique? And there I clearly would say no. Of course, it is important that a guitar teacher knows what he's talking about. And it's really important for a guitar teacher that he's not blocking different kind of perspective, different kind of opinions of a certain technique. You always have to be curious about what you're doing on your instrument. You always have to 
accept that there's more to learn as a teacher, but you don't have to play it on the same level like other guitar players. There are guitar players out there which are way over my level, but where I would say, are they as good as an educator? Probably not, because as an educator, you maybe need other skills that you have to learn as well. It's a difficult kind of question, and it's a question that I asked myself a lot after seeing this video. So, but now, would I recommend to watch this video, the full two hours of Anton Oparim's Universal Technique video? Definitely, yes. Check out Anton Oparim's playing and style, everything, it's totally worth it. There's so much to learn about these kind of videos. But always have the things in back in your mind that I just mentioned here in this video, especially when it comes to the analysis of these certain guitar players. Anton is also selling courses and masterclasses and coaches and I, I would say I can recommend, even though I haven't bought something from him yet, I would say I re recommend to check out what he's doing as well as a guitar teacher. So, so much for today's video. I hope you like this little video. Check out the Anton Operim stuff. And yeah, I hope I'm going to see you in my next video. Again, feel free to consider subscribing, leaving a like and a comment. Cheers and stay progress.